What's going on, everyone? A little wild to be doing an emergency pod for a Spencer Turnbull signing, but we were both free. Probably one of the more note outside of the NOLA signing, I would say one of the more notable players we've picked up this offseason. And yeah, we, we've, we've got him. So right-handed pitcher Turnbull is coming to the Phillies on a one-year deal worth $2 million, plus $2 million in incentives as well. And he has a minor league option left because of the money the Phillies paid. So there is that flexibility there, and he provides some starting pitching depth for you. So, Drew, initial reactions, what are your thoughts on bringing in Turnbull right away? Um, I definitely think it's uh, definitely a good high upside, like kind of like a low low floor type thing where he could come to the minor or the major leagues and have a 7 ERA like he did last year. I mean, there's yeah. no really telling what he's going to look like, but for $2 million, it's worth it every single day of the week. I mean – if he gets anywhere near what he was in 2021, that would be just incredible. Because he had a he had a 288 ERA with a 295 FIP. That's like, that's really good. I mean, yeah. that'll that'll play. It yes. was only it was only 50 innings, but if sure. you can get that kind of quality, even even for 50 innings, I mean, that's worth two million dollars every day. So right. No, I'm 100 percent with you, and the stuff is really good. Like just looking at it on Savant and, and Fangrep so far, like he's definitely he's definitely got good pitches too. Like they move well. Obviously, last year I believe he had a foot injury in addition to coming off of Tommy John. So like he he hadn't pitched in a year and a half, and then that happens. He only starts seven games. Just wasn't really wasn't really a great situation for him last year, honestly. But I honestly think that I don't know like what he's going to look like in spring, but I certainly think he can bounce back this year. I know, and I'll link it in our community tab or, or something, I believe pitcher zone. Uh, I think it was Jack Foley did an article on why he believes like he's a good breakout candidate for this year too. Uh, and at the price we gave him, you absolutely take the chance on a guy like that. And I think it makes a ton of sense. They were definitely looking for a deal like this where they would get some starting pitching depth. They obviously did it with Colby Allard. That one I'm not really as excited about. I think we both were on the same page on that. There's not a ton to really get excited about there, but Turnbull he's had success before we've seen his pitches play very well. I know his fastball is a little more flat. There's not much to it, but I think it's the fact that you have his slider and his sinker play really well off of it um, because those two move well and they look like the fastball for a little bit. So that is what is exciting. And then his changeup is really, really good. Um, I think his slider is a really good plus pitch, and I think his curveball is a plus pitch too. So you have a guy who has multiple pitches that pl that pay or play really well and a couple that play well off of each other too. And I think that gives you a guy who – you know, even if you start him in AAA this year, you could see him come up and contribute to the major league club. And I, I think it's very much good depth. You know, we haven't had guys like this before in the past where we've been able to add to the AAA rotation. It's been guys like Drew Hutchinson and Chase Anderson. I don't even know. I think Chase Anderson was in the majors with us actually when he was here, but um, and he wasn't very good. I remember him not being very good in the, the big leagues, but point being, I, I think you, you get a guy now who if injuries happen, you have, you have a backup plan. And I think that's really important to have. And it, it's going to be cheaper than I think a Michael Lorenzen would have been. That would have been nice to bring back a guy like him in that similar role. But, you know, I think it's really with I think Turnbull has better stuff, to be quite honest. And I also think Turnbull is he's 31 right now. So it's similar age, too. So I'll take the guy who has better stuff and who's had success before and has shown some flashes. So I really like it from that angle. And I think it just it's nice to know that we have a safety net. Hopefully, depend. We'll see how he looks in spring training. I think that'll be a real test for him. But it's nice to know we do have a safety net, or at least a plan for a safety net if something goes wrong. And we don't have to use that bullpen day. Yeah, I mean it's pretty brutal watching bullpen games every five days whenever somebody gets hurt. So, I mean it's it's just two million dollars. I mean, like like I said earlier, it's he has a minor league option, and they they basically are paying two million dollars for a guy that has a minor league option, even though he's probably not. Like what he did last year is not worth $2 million, but having that depth and that option to bring him up. And it's a guy that has, has had success in the major leagues before. And I think you just kind of bank on like our pitching development or analytics or whatever it may be to kind of turn him back around into that correct direction where he had a two, 2880 or a one season. So I think that would uh, definitely be huge for us, but I mean, even if it doesn't work out, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, because no. it, it's it's low risk. There's no – they're not, like, paying them $10 million to come out there and eat, pitch 150 innings. Like, that's just not what they're expecting. Right. Yeah, this guy, he's thrown a no-hitter before, too. I know a lot of guys have. Like, we, we saw Domingo Herman throw a perfect game last year. But 
Uh, he did it against the Mariners. It wasn't like he did it against the Oakland Athletics like Herman. So I think there is something to be said about that. But obviously, like, he has good stuff, like we've said. And and there is potential there, and there is a, a potential for a bounce back. And again, like like you said, there really is no risk involved with it at all. Um, and even if he doesn't pitch super well in spring training, as long as he shows some flashes, you'll put him in AAA. Um, if he has a disastrous spring, you cut ties at some point, and you say, all right, didn't work out. It is what it is. But I... I, I think he is going to have like a decent spring. Uh, I'm excited to see how he does. Now, there are a few comments here, and welcome into everyone who's watching, um, about Jordan Montgomery and Blake Snell and Cody Bellinger and how we haven't gone after some of those signings. We, we talked about it yesterday on our live um, about Jordan Montgomery and some of the rumors there. I would be surprised at this point, even you know before this, I, I would have been surprised if they added him. I think it would take Tywan Walker getting moved. We talked about that last night. You, you mentioned that. I guess what's your thoughts on that and how this impacts that? Are you a little upset about that? I know a lot of fans are upset about that. I'm not necessarily because I was not expecting that, but right. I, I can understand why a lot of the fan base was maybe getting their hopes up. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like things we don't even realize it like being in the shoes that we're in, but things happen very fast whenever it comes to this kind of stuff. Like his his market might have been up yesterday and it might be down today, you know. Like and the same goes for those guys that are looking for a hundred plus million dollars like today they might be asking for more than they were yesterday because of teams dropping out of the race or whatever it may be and i think i think the phillies were never really major players for a guy like that like montgomery or snell because they just they do not want to push that third luxury tax threshold because there's major penalties that come with it and it, the only way you're going to do that is for a guy like shohei otani or something like that yeah and i just yeah, I just don't think – I mean, they were comfortable doing it for Yamamoto, obviously. Yes. Yeah. They offered him $300 million, I believe, or something like that. So, I mean, that just kind of tells you how they feel about Montgomery and Snell because they're obviously not willing to offer those guys anywhere near what they would have, like Yamamoto or somebody like that. So, I think, I think I'm not upset about it because it's mainly just agents, like, making the market higher for their guys, like, I think a lot of these guys that are left are Boris clients, I believe. Yes. So correct. he's uh, he's majorly known for that. <laughs> right. No, you're definitely right. And and that's why I was never really buying into it was because I was like, well, he has the perfect opportunity here to, you know, add the Phillies into the mix of teams that are interested because it obviously will drum up the market for him as, as much as possible. And I understand that, you know, it's it's part of the game. It is what it is. And I like what Nerio said here too. The Phillies have spent a lot of money in past years. It's time for the players we already signed to prove what they're worth. And this is what we were talking about last night. Like they have guys on the roster who were expecting to bounce back or be healthy in Bryce's case for a full season. Um, and in addition, you know, they have a, a starting pitching rotation that does not have a bullpen day or potential for a bullpen day this year, which is nice. So I feel good about where they're at. I still like this move a lot. I understand, you know, it's not going to be something that people are going to be excited about when they go and just look on the baseball reference website and see the ERA from last year. That's going to frustrate a lot of Phillies fans. I get that. But I do think there is some logic to this, and it's very low risk. And I, I actually, like, I think he is going to start some games for the Phillies at some point this year. Injuries happen. Um, down down games happen, too. We had Taiwan Walker last year. There was times where we had to give him extra rest or pitch him on short rest to try to get him going, right? Like, that, that happened last year. So there are many instances in which he could come up and pitch. Um, but I, I actually do like the signing a good bit. And any final thoughts on this before we wrap up here? Um, I, I don't think Dave said that uh, you got to spend money to make money. I mean, we have six guys that are making a hundred plus million dollars. I mean, there's no, I don't think there's any other teams that have that. Maybe the Dodgers now, but um, I mean, they're spending money. I mean, they think they have the third highest payroll in the entire league right now. So I think they're still well positioned to go back to where they were the last two years. I mean, it's not like they just, got rid of a bunch of guys and also when it comes to a guy like Snell or Montgomery you have to remember if you sign one of them there's a good chance you're letting Wheeler walk after this year so mm -hmm. what would you rather have would you rather have like a guy that's like a three or a two maybe at the best or would you rather have the second best pitcher in baseball so I yeah. think that's something you definitely have to think about when you're wanting these hundred plus million dollar pitchers Right. And you said that last night, too. So I'm glad you reiterated that, because that's a really important point to make with all this is, you know, people do want something to happen. But at the same time, 
again, like it, it comes down to the fact that Wheeler, I think an extension, there's a good chance an extension might already be in, be in place right now that we don't know about. And they're just kind of waiting till the spring to do it for whatever the reason is. I think there's reasons for that. I don't know what the, the reasons are, but um, you know, I, I think there's definitely, that definitely makes sense. And yes, Jose, he was hurt. It was Tommy John surgery. And then I believe last year he came back halfway through the year and then only pitched seven games because of a foot injury. So the numbers were not necessarily encouraging last year, but I think it makes a lot of sense to, to take a risk on this type of guy. So, um, and yeah, like Sean said, low risk signing. Um, yeah, I really don't, I don't see too many downsides with this. And then as far as it goes to, you, ne- you know, you need to spend money to make money. Um, yeah. Like we have, like, again, just to reiterate that point, we spent a lot of money already. Uh, I, I'm sure people would love us to go over the third luxury tax, but Again, I think it has to be for the right player. And I understand not wanting to do that for Snell or Montgomery because I think we've both talked about it. Those are not necessarily guys we are super, super high on and compared to other free agent classes or whatever, you know, other opportunities you might have to go over that luxury tax. Yamamoto made a ton of sense in that regard. And also, like, look at some of the teams around the league. The Astros pretty much never go over, I forget which threshold it is, but the Astros don't spend a lot of money. Like, I think that goes over people's heads because they've had so, so much talent. That's because they're so good at developing talent, as much as I hate to say it. Like, I don't like that team, but they do not spend a lot of money. They, and then they cash in on a Verlander or they cash in on a hater every so often, and they make sure they spend their money at the right times. Um, and then, you know, you have other other teams like the Rays. The Rays biggest free agent signing in history of their franchise was Zach Eflin. That tells you all you need to know. That guy made 13 million. He's making 13 million a year there. And look, he's doing really well over there, but like they have good pitching development. So I think the Phillies are on the right track with their development, especially in in terms of pitching. Um, I like the guys we have in place right now. And again, like sometimes it just comes down to that. You don't necessarily need to always spend money, uh, especially when you have already spent a lot of money. So I think we have a good combination of the money we have spent and also you know, taking deals like these that aren't super risky or anything like that. So that's kind of where I'll leave it at. Anything else you want to say? Um, I was just going to say, like, remember probably how you guys felt like at this time last year when we were getting Jeff Hoffman, you know, like, look where that ended up. I mean, he was literally, he was nothing before he came here. And now he's a staple in the back of our bullpen. So you just got to, just got to think about like the fact that these guys got here for a reason. I mean, they're major league players they have the stuff to do it. So you just got to like dial it in or whatever you may, may need to do. I mean, mm-hmm. just, 100%. just think about that. Yep. No, I think that's a really good point. And yeah, there's still Sasaki next year too. If there's another guy you would go over that threshold for, he might be that other guy too. That is exciting to think about. So I, I if they're in, in, in on Yamamoto, I could very well see them being in on him. But is he a lefty? I think he is a righty. Um, okay. But I know he throws one Oh two. So that's exciting to think about, but um, that'll be a conversation for another time though. Anything you want to say before we sign off, Drew? Nope. I think that's everything. Yeah. Well, again, like I said, weird to be doing a quick emergency pod on Spencer Turnbull, but honestly, again, probably the second biggest acquisition we have made this off season, which is weird to think about, but I like it. Drew likes it. And we, we thank you guys for tuning in. Good turnout for a very short live here and a very quick emergency pod on Super Bowl Sunday, by the way. So you guys enjoy the game. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless y'all. And we will see you guys later this week. Peace. Have a good one, guys. Peace.